the gang, cause the boys are here. Boys to aim. Your handsome face is all white and leathery, just like your daddy Christmas, isn't it? Holy night, the silent night. Holy night. Randy, Randy, do me a favor, no cabaret. Just make sure you sharpen that bit of old tin you call a razor. Don't you worry, Sam. I will make it sharp as ready hell. <laughs> Somebody at Solomon's, would you please ask Randy to put a sock in it? Randy, you are out. This is a very delicate operation. <laughs> she loves me. She loves me not. <laughs> Will you please build up? Hey, you're not writing home again, are you, Parky? Well, I swapped an ear ago off for five fags. It seems a pity to waste it. I only write once a month. I can't think of nothing to say. <laughs> oh, it's easy. Dear Mum, I hope you're well. The news is quite good. I've got the deli itch. However, I've got over the runs. How's dead? <laughs> We've all been confined to barracks by old shutter, though none of us knows why. No, we don't. It's a damn disgrace. It's imprisonment without trial. That's against habeas corpus, isn't it? Yeah. They don't have habeas corpus in the army, sunshine. Hey, uh, what is habeas corpus? Well, it means literally to have the body. We have that in India, sir. We call it Kama Sutra. <laughs> Fortune telling Yeah! Now, don't tell him to go. Uh, how much? A uh, uh, kit in the pie, see? Sir, for Zap, zap. He say it is only eight annas. Oh, that's cheap. It costs you half a crown in Blackpool. <laughs> tell him I'll have it. What's him up? Pika, tell him. Yeah. Merely he might gone. tell us something oh, rotten is going to happen to old Sergeant Major Shatter. <laughs> We've got deep enough. Right away, then. Look at him. Look at him. Lam is trying to hypnotize me. <laughs> sir, sir, he wants you to do a design in the sand. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that is filthy. <laughs> Belt up. Well, goodness gracious, is it bad news? No, no, sir, he has headache. <laughs> What's he want now? More money? No, no, sir, he want aspirin. Tell him to get on with it. He'll have his later. But he knows he needs to get out there, yeah. Hata! Sabi say that he can see a shaft, a very bright light. Limelight, Sully. I'm in the limelight. Oh, I'm going to be a star. Oh, I'm so glad. It's such a relief to know, isn't it? He knows he needs to get out there, yeah. Hata! Sabi says he can see it shining through the trees. The open air theatre Scarborough. That's Scarborough, I'm a jungle, aren't they? Sabi say, do they have jungle in Scarborough? Jungle? Jungle? It's a swindle. <laughs> no, 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 Sab. Make another pattern in sand. I went to a fortune teller once. She told me one day I'd be a soldier. And who knows, lovely boy, one day it might come. To you. <laughs> Shut up! What is that man doing in here? He's a fortune teller, Sergeant Major. I will tell his fortune. <laughs> If he is not out of this bastard in ten seconds, he will find my tour right up his jacksy. <laughs> Who is that, Joe? Hot the ass of the ass, <laughs> Oda! Some doubt there, Gildai! Oh, Sergeant Major Saab, he is cursing you. He say that all your teeth will fall out. <laughs> oh, dear, how sad, too late. <laughs> My sight bear to get him off this camp and don't let me see him here again. Don't you worry, Sergeant Major Saab. I will quickly give him the bum's rush. Shut up. <laughs> you are a lovely man. <laughs> right, lovely boys. Now I expect you've been wondering why I asked you not to leave camp this afternoon. You didn't ask us, Sergeant Major. You told us we was confined to barracks until further orders. Oh, dear, did I say that? Must have been a slip of the tongue. Because I am not annoyed with you. Oh, dear me, no. <laughs> I just thought we would do a bit of rehearsing. But isn't that of you going to ask me what for? <laughs> what for, Sergeant Major? Good boy. <laughs> Nicely put. Very polite. <laughs> what for, said this smart young soldier? <laughs> I will tell you. It's Saturday afternoon. There's nobody about. Nobody can see you. So I thought we would rehearse the flag ceremony. <laughs> what is the flag ceremony? 
Lofty. I don't know, Sergeant Major. I will tell you, Lofty boy. <laughs> it happens when the sun is setting. A detachment of hand-picked smart soldiers salutes the Union Jack and lowers it while the bugler plays the last post. He's bringing tears to your eyes already, boy. <laughs> You've been eating onions. <laughs> now, who is going to volunteer for this rehearsal? Well, it might help you lovely boys to make up your minds when I tells you that them that does not volunteer will be doubling around the barrack square in field service marching order until we are finished. That is what I like to see. <laughs> Keen soldiers. Parade outside on the parade ground. Get on, parade! Oh! <laughs> you old dozy idle fellow, rise and shine and pull your damn string. You make our fine British officer sobs windy. <laughs> and shoot up straight when you're punkering. <laughs> hey, Anji, if you don't want to kill me, I'll take the punkers' revolution. And don't be such clever dicky. <laughs> Sergeant Major is going to make the concert party pull down the onion jack. Oh, dear. <laughs> this will mean many bags of bull. Why are they doing, why are they doing this, Rangi? Are the British going to quit India like the way we have been suggesting by throwing stones at them? No, no, you ignorant coolie. This is part of British Empire way of life. Have you not heard them say, sun never set on British flag? Uh-huh. You know how they're doing that? But I'm telling you, they are jolly smart monkeys. <laughs> you know what they're doing? They are taking down flag after tea and before gin and tonic. <laughs> right. Pay attention. Gunnar Sagdan, are you listening, Gunnar Sagdan? Yes, Sergeant Major. Gunnar Sagdan, two paces forward, march! <laughs> I have been doing a bit of snooping at your records. And from that, it transposes that Gunnar Sagdan Yur was for two years a member of the Boys' Bugle Band. Is that right? Yes, Sergeant Major. And of course, he joined the army and we started to win the war. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that is, don't you? A bugle. Good boy. <laughs> now, do you know the tune of the last post? Yes, Sergeant Major. When I give the word, you will play it. There's just one thing, Sergeant Major. No, no argument. Stand over there and wait till I give the word. Sergeant Major has given his trumpet to Lofty Sub. Why is he doing this? This is part of British code, Mohammed. The British code? Ah, true British gentleman never blows own trumpet. <laughs> now, lovely boys, you all know how to present arms, don't you? Even you, Mr. Lardy Dargana Graham, with your university education, is not too stupid to do that, is you? Well, 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 well we're rather inclined to do it at different speeds, Sergeant Major. <laughs> Different speeds, Sergeant Major. <laughs> what you may not have been learnt at Hoxford and at Cambridge is how to fold the flag. Get a bowman. Cop hold of the two ends. Right. On a command one, you will bring two ends together. What? <laughs> On the command two, bring the right hand down to the bottom corner, making sure to hold the top part secure with the thumb and forefinger of the left hand. Oh! <laughs> On the command three, bring both ends horizontal once again. Hey! <laughs> what are you doing? I did just what you said, honest. He did, Sergeant Major. I, I was watching. Shut up. As you were. But <laughs> no, hey. You 
are doing it deliberate, aren't you? Ex excuse me, Sergeant Major, but really, it's quite simple. Uh, you're facing him, you see. So when you use your right hand, he must use his left. And uh, vice versa, of course. <clears throat> Thank you, Professor Einstein. <laughs> when I want you that, I will ask for it. As you were. Command four, you will take three paces towards me and hand me your hand. <laughs> Is that clear? Yes, Sergeant Major. Four! <laughs> What are you doing with your right foot? Uh, it's my fault, Sergeant Major. I've been making him practice that for the dancing cheek-to-cheek -cheek number. <laughs> my compliments to Ginger Rogers, you. And tell her that if you do not put her right foot on the ground, she will be dancing cheek-to-cheek -cheek in the glass house. <laughs> Cow! Oh, that lovely song. Heaven, I'm in heaven. Oh, oh, oh. oh. And my heart... Shut up! There's one thing I cannot stand, is Indian music. <laughs> On the command five, you will commence to roll the flag, starting at the top. Five! <laughs> there. Now, you better iron it before you use it again, otherwise it won't be fit to be seen. <laughs> Why we have still got some insanity left, we will pass on to the actual lowering ceremony. Colonel Parkins. Sir. Stand by on the string. Yes, sir. The guard commander gives the order to present arms. And when this manoeuvre has been completed, the string man commences to lower the Union Jack, slowly and relevantly, while the bugler plays the last post. Is that clear? Sergeant Major. Shut up. <laughs> God, present eyes. <laughs> Parkins, lower away. Yes, sir. Slowly, boy, and relevantly. <laughs> Bugler, play. <laughs> records clearly state that for two years you was a member of the Boys Bugle Band. Is that right? Yes, Sergeant Major. Then what was you doing? <laughs> I was the drummer. <laughs> because I think that I'm going to be sent to the day, but then I'm not Louis Armstrong. <laughs> Get back in the ranks. <laughs> if I... If I could make a suggestion, I, um, I could hum it, Sergeant Major. <laughs> I could hum it, Sergeant Major. <laughs> Get this, Gunner Graham. While I got breath in my body, the Union Jack will not be lowered while Lardy Dar Gunner Graham sings Lardy Dar. <laughs> it will be lowered in a relevant silence. <laughs> Get back to the present! Bombardier, Sir. lower the flag. <coughs> well, tug it, tug it! Pull it, boy, pull it. Haven't you got the strength to pull a flag down? What have you been doing? <laughs> what, shall I get a ladder? Oh, you will not get a ladder. God, ground arms, and double over here. Oh, what rotten to do? A glorious Union Jack has got nutted? <laughs> right. 
Now you will note that at the base of this piaster there is a pin. I am going to extract that pin, whereupon the flagpole will fall right across there. <laughs> and you better catch it, because otherwise it will hammer you into the ground. <laughs> All except Gunnar Sagan, who's halfway there already. <laughs> Philip Hargins. Sir. Come by you. Yes, sir. You will stand by to take the pin when I have extracted it. Yes, sir. Right. Stand by. <laughs> Put Paul's door on back up. What an act. It's brought the house down. <laughs> Here we are Better. again. Come here, sir. Empty bucket, caro ecto. Not just up. Come here, sir. I have good news. Roof mending water coming tomorrow to take away hold. Hey, Bearer. Yes, this uh, Krishna Godfather you praise to, is he any good like? Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Sir. Jolly good. Very powerful and merciful, sir. Just like your own God, only more sexy. <laughs> what I mean, like, is when you praise to him, do it work? Oh, yes, sir, Major Saab. If Krishna hear your prayer, it work every time, sir. Unfortunately, in India, lying very busy. <laughs> but, sir, Major Saab, if you want to get rid of hole, do not pray. Wait for roof mending water. <laughs> Krishna. Ari. Hare Krishna. <laughs> I'm only an humble sergeant major. And I'm not very important. I'm not very holy either. <laughs> but if you want a lifelong friend, <laughs> help me, please. Help me to get that bloody concert party up the jungle. <laughs> We must have a few gins tonight, Nigel. Wish you bon voyage. Yeah. I say it's all rather sudden, isn't it? Well, that's how these things happen, you know. Anyway, 12 o'clock tomorrow, and it's me for the other car. Yeah, but you uh, won't actually be doing any of the fighting, of course, will you? No, 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 not this time. No, they put me in charge of welfare. Oh, you mean billiard tables and things? I don't <laughs> see, Ashwood. They don't have billiard tables in the jungle. I'm awful sorry, sir. They, they couldn't level them. <laughs> I think it's just books and entertainment and the kinema and drafts and things. What a shame you won't be here tomorrow night to see the new show. Yes, yeah, pity all this then. I didn't know you had a concert party. What sort of things do they do? But they're doing a night in Havana. Ah. Several of them dress up as girls. Then this chap comes <laughs> out selling peanuts. And he sings peanuts. <laughs> -da 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 -dum, ta -tum, ta -tum. Sounds rather good. I, say, I suppose, sir, I suppose I couldn't borrow them for a couple of weeks. No, I don't think I could do that. Oh, you could, sir. I, I mean, uh, well, the temple's not very full, sir, and them poor boys up the jungle, they need uh, joking and relaxation. Yeah, you, they dress up as girls, you say? Girls, sir? They're lifelike. You can't tell them apart. <laughs> really? Yeah, well, of course, they don't have rough it, you know. They spend most of their time at the back of a three-tonner, have to sleep on the ground. Ooh, they'd revel in it, sir. <laughs> As long as they can entertain you, know, sir, it's in their blood, you see. I suppose I could spare them for a week or two. I tell you what, we'll get them to give an audition after Tiffin, and then you can see if they're up to scratch. I'll go and get them ready for them, sir. <laughs> I want you to take a special chitty to the concert party basher. Hey, that Krishna God of yours, he's pretty good, isn't he? <laughs> If you're looking for a moral filthy song, if you're in the middle, monkeys can't be wrong. Peanuts! We'll play again. 
We normally throw peanuts at the audience, but you being officers, we didn't like to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if your commanding officer can be persuaded to let you go, you're absolutely right for my audience. Carry on, son, then. Go! <laughs> well done, boys. I'm proud of you. Carry on, Bombardier. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Randy. Randy. Uh, who is he, anyway? What's up? He's B.I.C. B.I.C.? Ah, up. Very important colonel. <laughs> he is from Delhi Saab, and Sergeant Major Saab says that he is big cheese in entertainment and billiard balls, isn't it? <laughs> That's it, lads! It's Delhi for us! Oh, oh, it's Delhi! It's Delhi! It's Delhi! White dinner jacket! It's the big time! No more dirty bashers! <laughs> oh, a proper orchestra. <laughs> and, and Saab, I will wear silver band round turban and flower behind oh, your own. Yeah, of course! <laughs> I shall polish my tea urn and fill it with half a pound of very best Thai food tips. Randy, can I pick the can of my pool? Is it chai? Or may I carry up pool? Same ready stream. At last, at long last, I shall be a star. Yes, lovely boy, you will be a star. Get fed in, boys. The Colonel is very proud of you, and so am I. You passed the whole audition. With flying colours. You mean he's, he's going to let us go? Yes, he is. Hey! 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 He didn't want to mind, <clears throat> but I persuaded him. <laughs> oh. Gee, thanks, Sergeant Major. Well, we've had our differences in the past, haven't we? But that's all over now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, of course it is, Sergeant Major. And to show there's no hard feelings, I would like you to put a little request number in the show to remind you of me. You name it, Sergeant Major. Can I sign it? Yes, Sergeant Major. Do you know that lovely old song, Trees? I think so. How's it go? I think that I shall never see a poem lovely as a tree. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> you sing that song for me. Because where you were going, the scenery will be just right. <laughs> Do you know where you were doing a show? Up the jungle. Hey, shut up. We thought he was entertainment officer in Delhi. He was. But now he's going to do shows deep, deep, deep in the jungle. And you know we'll be waiting for you at the stage door, going to Beaumont. Lovely little slant eye Japanese. <laughs> right. So yours, you will order his bombardier. The Royal Artillery concert party will report at 1200 hours on Monday, ready for moving off. All except for Gunner Parkins, <laughs> who will report sick tomorrow morning. Report sick? Why? What's wrong with me? We don't know, boy. <laughs> that is why we have to see the M.O. Mamma dear sir, in this one, I have put all your greasy paint. <laughs> your buddy Flanagan coat and hat, your Groucho Marxist spectacles, and your Teddy Brown tummy sap. What's that? The sap that is mine. Where's the rest of your stuff? No sap. That is all I have, sap. Except for this one letter sap from Lieutenant Baba, to whom I was bearer two years, sap. And in it he write that I'm top hole fellow and jolly good all round chap. <laughs> yeah. All right, fellas, those that haven't can smoke. Track a beer in five minutes. Look at that, Parky. Isn't that a beautiful sight? I wish I was going with him. Oh, you couldn't, boy. Not in your state of health. I didn't know dandruff could be that serious. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose I'd better bid him a fond farewell. <laughs> Ow! Right, lovely boys. Only a few short minutes, and we shall be forever parted. Oh, dearie me. He is saying goodbye to troops. My eyes will cry. This has been a very entertaining week. On the 23rd, Bombardier Solomons tried to bribe the M.O. to say he was not fit. This failed because the M.O. would not accept stage money. 
Keine Antwort, Männer. Ja. 24. Gunnar McIntosh pretended that he had gone do la tap and ran around the camp shouting, I am mad, I am bonkers, take me away. <laughs> Nobody noticed any difference, so this did not work either. Get out, Major. Something is doing. Sabs are rushing about like their flies are blue. <laughs> is this some kind of a disease? Huh? Like Dobie's itch, only makes them run much faster. <laughs> Now the best attempt yet. Gunnar Beaumont applied to the trick cyclist for a discharge on the grounds that he was psychologically unfit for military service. <laughs> that did not work either, because rumor has it that the trick cyclist is also psychologically unfit for military service. <laughs> it takes one to know one. <laughs> well, lovely boys, the sands is running out. Your transport is taken over at the vehicle depot. I have replaced the distributor arm that disappeared during the night. No swallow, sir. Shut up. The tires have been reflated. <laughs> and it only remains for me to say au revoir, adieu, goodbye, or as we says in Wales, tostine bob size. Can you spare a moment, Sir. Major? Sir. And if you were thinking of making a run for it, Bombardier, Ilford is that way. <laughs> About 6,000 miles. I just had this letter from a friend of mine in Delhi. It appears the papers are on the way, posting Captain Ashwood and I up the jungle. Oh, well, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, excuse me asking, uh, you haven't got the actual papers yet, so why are you packing now? Well, if we go with the concert party, our posting will have to be posted on to us. And if we move quickly, they'll never catch up, and we can come back here. <laughs> Each time, the whole thing will blow over. Well, I'll miss you, sir. Oh, you better come along as well. Oh, with a concert party? Yes, of course. Sir. What's going to happen to Gunner Parkin? Oh, bring him along, too. Pack your kit, Gunner. Yes, sir. What about my dandruff? Soon clear up in the jungle. <laughs> All right, fellas. Start loading. That's it. Come on. Cheer up, Sully. It might be quite nice. But at least there's one consolation. We'll get away from old Sergeant Major Shatter. Hold it! What is it? Has the posting been cancelled? No, lovely boy, the posting has not been cancelled. I am coming with you. <laughs> there is one very old Hindu proverb which say that when you have cholera and beriberi and your wife is having congress with best friend, it does not stop your house from catching fire. <laughs>